So here I'm on the tip of the land, you know, on the north of Bordeaux. And on the other side there's a ferry going over. And this is like a, um, this river, no, well, it's the ocean, which is going all the way to Bordeaux in here. So this is one of the first settlements of the, uh, yeah. And there are the, uh, the Brittany. Oh, yeah. If you go a little bit further, you've got the, uh, the Brittany people over there. And uh, well, I showed it on the map later on. I finally made it. I'm just like, the weekend, it's probably starting. Uh, then I'll be, I'll be off here. So in fact, I was here. So here's Bordeaux here. And I was just here, where, this, uh, where this, the river is going in, uh, La Gironde. So it was water all around here. <clears throat> so you see here, they call it the, uh, the pool here. The Germans built it, you know, because a little train going here, you know, to, um, to load the U-boats here. And the pier here, it's, it's been much larger going into the sea, so you just had to come here. And that's where the opening is, what you see, see all the, the bunkers here. And I can't see anything, but anyway, there's the opening going to Bordeaux. So this is the pool. So here you can see the, the rails, the little train going in there, you know, to bring food and to the U-boats. It has to be around, you know, the little train coming from this side. So empty, it goes on there, and back it is, you know. Yeah, they thought about everything, not like going forward and go back. So it's a whole U-boat structure here. So you see a little train going here, you know, to, uh, to, to, to bring food to the bunkers here too. And on this side, it's going here to the U-boats. Uh, so that, you know, they thought about everything. So now people can swim in it. What a waste. The whole bloody war went away, say. So, you know, if I see this, you know, the Jerry's, you know, imagining, you know, a you know, little train, you know, sitting all on it, you know, like five Jerry's with their helmets and all, you know, their arms going up, you know, in a little train. <laughs> Can you see the image, you know, like, you know, going all the way there, you know, and to bring the foods and all that to the MTB, out to torpedo boat, or the submarine, the U-boat. So, um, you, know, you know, considering the war, you know, it was in the beginning, uh, it was a, uh, they had the Blitzkrieg, you know, the, uh, the Blitz war, you know, a lot of movement. And then they installed here and it became a positional war and that's why they lost it. Uh, well, but there are, of course, there are bigger reasons. They were meant to, to lose it, you know, because of the uh, because of the aristocracy and the pharaohs. Dag in, dag out, 50 years long, vertrok zo uit de Spuistraat in Amsterdam de blauwe tram naar Zandvoort. Op de spitsuren kropen de logge tramtreinen door het drukke verkeer. Daardoor konden de passagiers rustig van het uitzicht genieten. Over de grachten en langs de Westertoren verliet de tram het centrum van de stad. Maar het verkeer heeft tenslotte de blauwe, zoals hij algemeen genoemd werd, de doodsteek gegeven. De gemeente Amsterdam zag hem liever uit het stadsbeeld verdwijnen. Vijftig jaar lang wist de populaire tram de ongelijke strijd met de veel snellere trein vol te houden. Amsterdam-Zandvoort was de drukste interlokale tramlijn van Europa. Miljoenen dagjes mensen en vaste klanten heeft de blauwe in de loop van zijn bestaan vervoerd. Kenmerkend voor de tram was het overstapje dat de conducteur altijd moest nemen. Langs de Amsterdamse poort reed de blauwe tram Haarlem binnen. En dan was het bijzonder opletten geblazen, niet alleen voor de bestuurder, maar ook voor het wegverkeer, want hij kwam door smalle straatjes. Eenmaal weer buiten Haarlem wist hij zich hoog te verheffen boven de trein, die hier tussen twee haakjes binnenkort zelf de hoogte ingaat. En dan ging het in snelle vaart door een afwisselend duinlandschap naar het eindpunt Zandvoort. Dat alles is nu verleden tijd geworden. De tram Amsterdam-Zandvoort moest verdwijnen.